Ladies and gentlemen, this is your reaction. This is Why did Prussia lose Poland after the Napoleonic Wars? Short animated documentary by the channel History Matters. Yeah, Prussia, despite winning the Napoleonic Wars, never regained a chunk of its Polish land that it has lost in 1807. So why not and why did it go to Russia? Obviously, this is referring to a thing, the Congress of Vienna or Treaty of Vienna, whatever. Treaty of Vienna, I think, usually refers to when the four nations, uh, Prussia, Austria, Russia, and Britain, right? Yeah. Yeah, th these four nations just decided to basically, you know, combine together and fight Napoleon. But, you know, Treaty of, you know, Congress of Vienna basically means that they sat down and really decided like, who's going to get what. <laughs> it's just some next level shit. Every time I see something like that, it's just like... People just gathering out. Hmm, who should get what land? Let's let's let, let me get out my sharpie now and just let's just try try to draw lines on the map. That is some next level shit. I'm not gonna lie. That, that happens a lot, right? Uh, you know, in World War One, <laughs> basically in here and many times, just people just yeah. The, you get this, you get that. It's it's you know it's buffet. So why did Prussia lose Poland? I think because you know Russia was one of the main powers of fighting. Napoleon, not just main power, the Russia is basically the reason why Napoleon lost in the first place, right? We know that horror show, that was the, you know, Napoleon's conquest of Russia. Not that Napoleon didn't, wasn't badass, right? He literally went all the way to Moscow and took it over, but he just thought like Russians would just, you know, give up, which didn't happen. He didn't prepare for winter and that's all downfall from there. He lost most of his army and experienced soldiers, basically. After that, he was never going to come up. So, yeah, that was just fucked up. So, but because of that, I think Russia had m more ho say on matter. Who's going to get what? So, they just got the Poland. I don't know. But, yeah, I, I think it's just going to be, you know, agreement, compromises here and there. But let's see. Basically, this video is about Congress of Vienna, if, I, if I'm not mistaken. So, let's watch it. When you win a war, any previous territorial losses are often swiftly returned to you. Yet, whilst Prussia had been on the winning side of the Napoleonic Wars, when France had been defeated and occupied, Prussia's previous loss of this territory in 1807 was never rectified. And in fact, it was handed over to Russia. Which raises the question, the why? <laughs> why did Prussia lose this land even after it was victorious? So, to begin, during Napoleon's adventures across Europe, numerous coalitions formed to oppose him. One of these coalitions was the Fourth Coalition, which was comprised of these nations trying to prevent France from creating a new European order. The coalition didn't fare too well, and shortly after Napoleon had occupied Berlin, the Prussians sued for peace. In the peace treaty, it was dictated that Prussia would lose all of these lands, with this large chunk here becoming the Duchy of Warsaw, the first independent Polish state since Prussia... By the Russia way, at the time, I didn't appreciate this a lot because I didn't know about the Prussians, but now seeing this, like Napoleon kicked ass of Prussians at the time, Prussia gave up. That, that just that just shows like how you know. Imagine at the time, right? Prussians lost to Napoleon and they gave up, right? I mean, if you really you know put yourself in that situation, like Napoleon wars is happening, obviously it's gonna happen slow and slow. It's a war, right? So you know, every few months, a year goes by, a month goes by, and you read, oh, they lost. Prussia gave up. This gave up. Like holy shit, Napoleon is literally taking half of the world. Imagine the mentality, like, you know, it's uh, the power disparity was not as big as it is today with many nations, right? I mean, if you put, you know, the list of who's militarily powerful, right, uh, there'll be big gaps in nations that who can be really powerful, right? But that wasn't the case in Europe at the time. When you hear this French guy named Napoleon just beating the shit out of everybody, imagine the mentality, like, people would be genuinely scared after many victories, like, holy shit, this is going to end bad and Austria carved up Poland-Lithuania at the end of the previous century. <laughs> Seven years later, eyes. Napoleon was defeated. Then again a year later and France was occupied and in no position to dictate its own borders, let alone those of Prussia. So why was it then that after the dust had settled, a chunk of Russia's Polish territories were a part of the Russian Empire and had not been returned? Whilst Prussia did lose a lot of its Polish territory, it did it. Lose most of what it had gained in the first two partitions. However, there were two main reasons that this land was lost to Prussia forever. The first reason was the most obvious, Sweden. You see, after Prussia's losses in 1807, its place in the coalition was diminished, and thus it didn't command the same level of respect that it once had. Both Prussia and Sweden had eyes on territory in the German-speaking parts of Europe, 
And if Prussia spent too much political goodwill trying to regain Poland, then that would leave Sweden with a greater foothold in the area. The second reason was that Russia was occupying the lands. When pushing Napoleon back to Paris, the Russians had conquered the Duchy of Warsaw, and had placed it under military administration. Prussia wasn't exactly excited at the prospect of fighting another major war that it would likely lose, and so there really wasn't much that they could do. That's not to say that the Russians weren't going to compensate Prussia for the loss. Emperor Alexander I knew that Prussia had a claim to the land, and so in return for handing Warsaw and the Polish heartlands over to Russia, it would support Prussia's expansion westward which worked well for both sides. For Prussia, it meant that it would lose... <laughs> yeah, a compromise running through the field. Obviously, Prussia wasn't that big that can fight something like Russia or something. So they, they're not going to fight. But Russians knew that Prussians can be, I mean, if they rise up, they're going to be a problem, which they will be, apparently, you know, after Napoleonic Wars for centuries to come. World War One, World War Two, basically, <laughs> it's just there. So, yeah, obviously, Russia knew that let's not piss off, you know, Prussians too much. So they obviously compromised there. But I like how basically they all meet up, decide who gets what land, and at the same time, they're in, the, in their mind, they're doing all this, you know, p political shit, like, oh, if we do this, Sweden going to get this land, it's going to be too powerful for Sweden, but if they get this land, it's too powerful for them. They're micromanaging every shit in their background, right, while deciding who gets what. Great chunk of its Catholic Polish-speaking population and could replace them with the richer German-speaking Protestant populations to its west. Mm. It would also increase Prussia's influence in the new German Confederation at the expense of Austria, which was a fun bonus for them. And for Russia, gaining Poland was important because Alexander believed that some of Napoleon's liberal ideals were here to stay. And so it was better to paint himself as Poland's liberator and protector than to risk Prussia getting it wrong and Poland breaking free. This ah. wouldn't last for long because after Poland revolted in 1831, its status as an independent state was abolished and it was formally incorporated into the Russian Empire as a territory. And with that, Prussia lost control of Poland and its successor state Germany would only briefly regain it during the First World War. I hope you enjoyed this episode mm. and a special thanks... That is interesting. See, the thing with uh, the Poland is... For Russia, it's re this area is really important, right? Uh, because all the capital, I say, St. Petersburg, Moscow is very close to the border if they don't take something like Poland into account, right? So after Napoleon just walked his ass there, of course, from their point and even to the Soviet Union times, after much after this, they, they basically had that mentality like, we need more land in this side for the defense. Otherwise, anybody can just walk their ass up to Moscow, right? It would not take that long. So that, it, that was one of the key strategic things, like we need Poland and things like that. And Prussia also won because, you know, they, they got more German-speaking areas now. So they can have more influence there, which will, in future, will somewhat help making Germany as a whole, right? How Bismarck did it, right? So yeah, I like this domino effect is ridiculous when you see through history. But yeah. All right, people, I guess that was, that was the end of the video, right? Oh yeah. All right, people, that was uh, why did Prussia lose Poland? after the Napoleonic Wars. Yeah, there were many reasons, basically. Whenever you see history, any political thing, many reasons, right? But everybody was somewhat happy, so there you go. Everybody but France, obviously. By the way, if I remember correctly, this uh, Congress of Vienna, uh, this, this, when they decided all this shit, that was just like a week or two ago before the Battle of Waterloo, which is kind of fucked up when you really think about it. They're just beating up doing this, and it's just a week or two, there's gonna be Battle of Waterloo. That's something. All right, I'll see you next time.